What's happening guys, this is Nate with Player Court. Today we're talking about Labor Cup, 2021 Labor Cup in Boston. It was enjoyable, but it was one-sided. As usual, Team Europe absolutely trounced Team World 14 to one. They only needed a 13. They got an extra one just to sprinkle on top. And in fact, on day three, they didn't get to finish the remaining matches, which has happened in the past as well. So what is happening? Why do we keep seeing this so one-sided? And the big conversation today is how can we make it more even to make the event even better? So one, let's go ahead and push aside some of the talk that I woke up to this morning that Labor Cup isn't going to last. It's going to last because it's a guaranteed ticket to where you can see some of your favorite stars all in one place. No matter what, the Labor Cup is turning out the best players. So even though the overall score is one-sided, we're seeing some really good individual matches. So one of the sentiments is from Team World's Captain Johnny Mack. He contests that scheduling needs to change, that the ATP needs to freeze other events so that they can get better players. Well, their players are pretty good. I mean, you got the big serve bots between Riley Pelka and John Isner. Um, and, and the firepower of Denis Pavlov, Kyrgios, but they're not pulling through. So who, what, what, who can we pull from? Well, we've got the up and comers, right? We, we have Brooksby, we have Sebastian Korda. Players are getting better, right? And, and to get those players in, maybe that makes us more competitive down the road. Now, that doesn't mean the team world's not getting better. Between the Italians, uh, Musetti and Sinner, and you know, you add Carlos Alcarez, they're only getting better as well. But can they continue to get the star power? I think that is the big question. So the something I woke up to this morning as well that I thought was really interesting is the conversations being had about adding women. Now, can you imagine this? So let me just look here real quick. If you add women for Team World, we're talking about Ash Barty, Naomi Osaka, Serena Williams, Bianca Dreschke, Layla Fernandez, Coco Golf. Add them in on the World Team. How much better does that team get? Now, Team Europe, adding Simona Halep, uh, Swiatek, Rudakanyu, Kvitova, uh, Muguruza, they get good as well. But you can kind of see the parallels here to where Team World definitely takes a step up on the women's side by adding them to the Labor Cup, right? So it starts adding a different dynamic. And how exciting would it be to, to see them in mixed doubles? What if the final match of the tournament was in mixed doubles, right? So you could see the men and in, 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 in women in singles and doubles, but then the mixed doubles really, really adds a dynamic that I think would be special. So Roger confirmed this morning, he did say that he has reached out to multiple players on the WTA to, to, to gauge their interest. Of course, they're interested. It's Roger Federer who says no to Roger Federer. And so maybe that's what we see down the road. Maybe that's what starts making this scoreline a little bit closer. So what else happened this weekend? Well, Nick Kyrgios doing Nick Kyrgios things, right? Nick Kyrgios is done with the season, said he's headed home, uh, unfortunately having to, to deal with a, an, an ill uh, mother. But he's also, he keeps alluding to the retirement. He keeps talking about, you know, there's no way he's running another four to five years. And that's, that's likely. You can tell the torment in which he's playing under where he even self-proclaimed. He's, he's not as athletic. He's not as youthful as some of these guys up and coming. He's just here for a good time, not for a long time. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with Nick. But sadly, he did say that this is his last Labor Cup. Uh, we don't know if that's true because he's been a spark plug on the sideline between him and Sock uh, and, and those guys. The energy that they bring has always made it really interesting. But it appears old Nick is walking away. So who had the match of the tournament? Well, it's also who I thought was the player of the tournament, Andre Rublev. So Andre Rublev battled. If you watched Friday, he played. Pay, he paid. Maybe he did pay him. I don't know. He played Diego Schwartzman to a third set breaker and just an unbelievable match. Schwartzman led the entire tie break to the very end where Rublev just came up with some absolute magic to seal away that moment. Um, but also in doubles, so I, he went 3-0. He won both, um, I believe it was, he won one singles matches and two doubles matches. So Rublev in doubles, who would have thought the dude can volley, right? Like really fun for me, for me personally, it was just a lot of fun to watch the whole weekend, but going three and zero, definitely the MVP. So, what is the moment? What was the moment of the tournament? Well, this is the runner-up. So, 
in the stands, super cool moment. You saw Roger Federer sitting with Andy Roddick. What do those guys talk about? Like, what is the storyline there? Wouldn't you love to be this dude here just listening in? Maybe hard with the mass, I don't know. But is Roddick talking about how he would have won so many more Grand Slams if it wasn't for Federer and, and their epic showdowns at Wimbledon? I just thought this was a really cool scene that they, they kind of panned over to. And it was like, huh, of all people, like it's Roddick and Federer having a chat in the stands. But this was not the moment. So the moment, the, the oh wow, moment of the entire tournament was this, oh, let me get out of this, was this moment, the video, I wish I could show you video, definitely look this up. But some language here, so I apologize in advance. Some, definitely some colorful language. But here, let me, let me give you the backstory here. So in the only point that the team world was able to secure, um, it, it was over Sasha Zverev in, in doubles, and promptly after lo losing the match, Zverev walked over to Team World and said, enjoy it, it's the last point you're going to get. So, McEnroe, F this guy. Isner, he said, what? F him. Schwarzman, what he say? He's got a real high pitch voice. That was my Schwarzman impersonation. All right, so... <laughs> McEnroe reiterates, he said, that's the last point we're going to win. <laughs> now, this is where it gets controversial. Opelka, he also says he's innocent. That is shots fired, my friend. Like, what he's referring to is, obviously, we know there's some domestic abuse allegations against Zverev. In fact, um, Carrillo, who was supposed to be announcing the event, stepped down because she wasn't happy that things weren't, she, that Zverev wasn't denounced in these allegations or things weren't being spoken more publicly, and with a lot of these players not making a public uh, opinion because they haven't been asked directly. But here, you can see this is all coming ahead. Zverev's not popular. Maybe he is with, with Sitsi Pass and some of the guys on Team Europe, but the cojones on this guy to walk, walk over to Team World and say that's the last point you're going to get. You know that Kyrgios doesn't like him. They have bad blood with kind of Zverev's behavior during the height of COVID. Kyrgios called him out. Um, but, but here you can see that uh, kind of team world going in, but then, yeah, the, 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 the shot across the bow, uh, Opelka is saying, yeah, he also said he was innocent, referring to the domestic abuse allegation. So, but this is part of the, you know, the moment, is it ugly? Yes, but why was it my favorite moment from this whole event? Because this is not an exhibition and if you've ever been to an exhibition, you get all excited. I, I watched Nadal and Del Potro in, in New York. I was so pumped. It was the first exhibition I attended, and it was scripted. It was like watching the WWE. You know, they're playing good tennis. They're not playing great tennis, but everyone kind of knows who's going to win. And this, these guys want to win, and they don't necessarily like each other. So what you're getting is what you paid for. You're watching athletes, tennis professionals, battle it out. And there's nothing better when you realize that there's a little bit bad blood. Shapovalov in the past, in the, the, the post interview made comments on it saying that they were going to dig in as hard as they could because of the comment. It's a little available, unfortunately. But, uh, but yeah, this is why the Labor Cup will continue to be popular. It'll continue to do well because as long as we're getting the best stars in the world and they're coming together and competing hard, everyone will continue to watch. All right, guys, really hope you enjoyed this today. Leave me your favorite moments. Leave it in the comment section. Tell me, let's, let's have some dialogue. Tell me what was your least favorite moment. What are your th thoughts? How can they make the Labor Cup better? And guys, also remember, be sure to check out in the comment section. There's a link that we left below if you want to check out our platform to meet players in your area for competitive match play practice or if you're looking for a lesson. Check out that link. Uh, you can do it for absolutely free. You can check out the platform for absolutely free. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. That is it for today's weekend wrap-up. See you soon.